What's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. Matt is riding this week the Lincoln Navigator, one of the biggest flagship of Lincoln. It's not just a big size of truck. It's not just a full-size SUV. It's a mega-size, three tons of truck, real heavy, impressive machine to look at also. Look at the front grille, how big it is. It's just screaming America when you look at it. The Lincoln logo is lighting up those nice legs headlights on the side typical boxy truck style you've got big wheels you've got those side steps that just come out and goes in when you get into the truck it's real big and when you look at the rear you've got the typical Lincoln signature with the LED lights that go one way till the other and this is a really looking great inside once again America's at its best it's big it's opulent it's one of the biggest vehicles that I've ever tested and I really like the design of the dashboard and you've got a screen that you can really master the multimedia system easily it's the same tree a tons of USB connector spaces for you your passenger and how about those seats more than 11 air cushion and more than 30 adjustment that you can make to get comfortable and it really shows you can even adjust your leg support independently and if you need it press on that button and you will get a master Massage. and that's what I like with those big truck comfort inside and when you're gonna do some highway cruising you're gonna feel real comfortable you've got the drive selection mode that it's really neat because it's gonna change the display inside that cluster uh, and the team is planet so navigator space planet so you can switch from excite conserve to normal and to some slippery stuff and deep condition mode so it's mostly going to change the reaction of the vehicle but it's also going to be true there that you're going to be able to shift from low range to high range 4x4 auto or simply full-time 4x4 and yes we tested this one in the diagonal test <laughs> that puny hill the navigator was just laughing at it and the engine inside is shared with the Ford Raptor that terrible beast 3. 5 liter twin turbo power it's good for 450 horsepower at 505,000 rpm 510 pound feet of torque at 3000 rpm so it's going to give you great acceleration it's mated through a 10 speed auto transmission it's going to be mostly fuel efficient when you're going to be on the highway though acceleration is not really bad but there's a tricky part it's only 93 octane fuel that you need to use to get those numbers not 91 not 80 89 not even 87 yes it's still going to be able to use some regular fuel but performance will be affected and guess what if you're going to see the acceleration that we did there's probably 87 octane fuel in that one because it's not that easy to find some 93 fuel right here in quebec city so still towing capacity is going to be impressive if you go for a 4x2 version which is available in the states guys it's going to be 8,700 pounds of towing that's a big boat that's a big trailer that you can get in the rear and for the 4x4 version with a Nell extended version of the Navigator it's going to be 8,100 and fuel consumption is not that great but look at the size it's three ton heavy this is a big school bus so this one's going to be good for 15 liter per 100 into town and 11.4 on the highway so it really gets down but remember 93 octane fuel that you need to use so price now luxury as a price and those vehicle those opulent those big one those american vehicle cost a lot of money ninety thousand dollars and it can go up to a hundred k that's a lot of money for a reserve l extended version of it but you will get 20 speakers inside a nice sound system luxury at its best comfortable seating for you and everybody in the rear of that car 22 inches wheels and remember to add 700 dollars if you want the premium paint but let's talk Talk about the negative points of the navigator first of all road and lane uh, it's not that great when you're going to be riding the highway it's going to be fully comfortable for everybody inside that vehicle but as soon as you're going to hit some major pothole guess what it's going to be camper style road and lane and how about school bus style remember when you were sitting in the back of a school bus and you hit a hole what happened you will be sent sky high in that vehicle and that's not a good thing as soon as you will also try to get in the final row well you've got enough space 
this, but the axis is kind of complicated with the seat in the second row that are really hard to manipulate and figure out which button to push or which handle to pull to make sure that you can get access to that rear section. There's some little bit of finishing detail that I'm not a fan of inside the Navigator, but otherwise I really like that vehicle. Let's talk about the plus points. The look is luxurious. That 3D limited logo in front. You can also go for some black edition that are really looking good. How about that floating console right here that's going to give you a lot of the space to put your stuff right under it? And how about those active motion seat, massage, 3D position, adjustment, 11 air cushion to make sure that you're comfortable and I really love that as soon as you press that button. Even for your leg independent, leg support, wow, once again, amazing. But I forgot the downside of those seats. You see the nice color that I have here? Well, the next thing you know, your jeans will have put some blue on those seats. So you need to really clean them often and make sure they are protected so they won't catch the colors of your clothes. How about amazing towing capacity for that beefy SUV? And how about power, acceleration power? That's what I like. You even get the trailer backup system. So you will be able to get your boat down the ramp without trying so many times. And how about that panoramic sunroof, the vista roof as they call it, it's really big. You're gonna be able to see the stars with the Navigator. You've got an awesome sound system, Reval as they call it, and how about 20 speakers inside? So that's nice to have in such a luxury vehicle. Let's talk about the competition. I will put together the Chevrolet Suburban, GMC Yukon, Yukon XL, and how about the Tau? You will be able to get some RST performance package in those vehicles. Some engines, 6.2 liters, 420 horsepower, V8, fuel efficient, 10 speed also. And how about more than 8,000 pounds of towing capacity? I really like the driving position of those trucks and it's real easy on maintenance, real easy to repair also over time. But you've got an awesome V8 sounds when you're gonna be accelerating. The Cadillac Escalade is a luxury version. It's got a nice V8 towing capacity with luxury style I love. You've got a quiet cabin. It's plenty of luxury when you look at it. It's really about the image. How about the Nissan Armada? Not as luxury years though, but you've got the look which is kind of stuck in the 2000. You've got a strong V8. It's capable off-road and you've got those incredibly comfortable front seat that might rival with the Navigator but it's not a luxury machine. If you want more luxury, you've got to go with the Infiniti QX80, which is the equivalent of the Armada, with a little bit more refined interior, but the price goes up so quickly, more and more with each package that you're gonna have. And you've got the top heavy handling of that vehicle. It feels even more heavy than the Navigator, and it can't really compete with the other luxury vehicle in that segment, with its style, with its multimedia system. So you might want to look elsewhere. How about the Ford Expedition, which is a basic version of the Lincoln Navigator. It's good for power with that V6 twin turbo shared with the Raptor. Depending on the configuration that you choose, 9,300 pounds of pure towing capacity. That's a big boat. That's a big RV. That's big fun with your family on vacation. You've got a lot of USB port inside. Same problem as the Navigator with the second row. It can be finicky with the folding mechanism and it's not as quiet on the highway. But if you want a pure luxury machine, you might want to look at the Mercedes-Benz GLS. Now performance is awesome with that vehicle, depending on the configuration. And if you put some little AMG letter on that vehicle, zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds, it's really fast, spacious, luxurious, but also quite a high price. And you've got less towing capacity than the contenders. And finally, you've got probably the Toyota Sequoia that you might want to take a look at. But remember, it's a gas guzzler. It's got a large cargo area though. It's showing its age. It cannot hide it, but you've got more reliability than probably most of the vehicle in that segment. And how about the TRD Pro version that they added this year? So you will be able to get in 
into some deep stuff with that big vehicle but be careful not to get stuck because it's real EV. So with the Navigator performance and luxury as its price are you ready to spend a lot of money for that kind of vehicle that's what I'm asking you guys and how about those big opulent American vehicles? are you ready to roll that feel free to add some comment in the section down there below do a thumbs up because you like it subscribe because you're gonna see the acceleration test of that big navigator with some 87 octane fuel though damn those journalists that couldn't find any 93 here in Quebec and how about the diagonal test easy breezy beautiful with a big navigator take care guys